Hey guys, Joshua here from Shooting Magazine and welcome to a Shooting Magazine tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you guys how to create work paths and export these paths from Photoshop to Illustrator. So in this case, I'll be showing you guys how to do this with a logo that was sent to me by a friend of mine who has a clothing line here in the Bronx, New York, basically here in New York, trying to spread around. And this is a file that he would usually send to his uh, shirt printing guy. So guy would try to screen this and it would come out to have jagged edges. I would zoom in for you and you would see the jagged edges that I'm talking about. So here on the circle you can see jagged edges. Here on the F you can see jagged edges. Just think of this jagged edges all over the place. And it's very bad because those are just pixels. And thing is your design will always come out very bad when you try to screen print it and it doesn't come out all that great so you would want a vectorized file so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create paths so that we could pass it down to Illustrator and create a vectorized version of this logo so let's get started now what we do is we would have our original workspace so if you don't have your layers tab you go to window click on your layers if you don't have your paths you can go windows click on paths those are the two windows that we're going to use our layers and our paths window so as you can see I have my layers tab and my paths tab right here on the right so we're gonna choose an object so I'm gonna use freshman first and then we're going to click our magic wand tool by clicking W so the magic wand of course is a selection tool and we're gonna start selecting so I'm gonna select the F in this case is separate for me but usually if your object is rasterized or is flat image or it's a converted smart object it will select all of it so if it does this to you too as well just hold your shift button while you're about to click to your next object and it will have a plus symbol under the magic wand tool so we click our next objects and if the H and the M or anything is together like this once you click it as you can see it will do a dual selection because they're connected basically and then finish it off now we have our selection of desire that we want to make pass for and we go to our pass tab and go down to this little circle here with anchor points and we're gonna create a work path so that's our make work path from selection tool so we have our work path here as you can see is the same shape as freshman and if you zoom in a little bit you will see like this minimal outline right there and that means that it traced and made work paths for your object so let's zoom out again and now we're going to just double click on our work paths and rename this to the name of the object or the text so if you have an object that's a circle your name is circle one or circle two whatever name you desire just to be organized so I'm named this freshman and we're going to do the same thing with the other layers like league so make sure your magic wand tool is selected and do the same thing and go to pass make sure you're unhighlighted from your previous work path so just click out to the box and then we will create a work path for this as well so then we will double click it and rename this make sure you unclick it before you go to your layers so you won't forget and do the same thing with FML so now we'll go into paths create a path for that and type in FML click OK and then we'll take our ellipse object or circle object and we're gonna select that too with our magic wand tool we're gonna un check, uh, click out so it won't be highlighted and then we'll hit our make work path again then I'm just gonna call this FML rim click OK the importance of this you will see in just a little bit for naming your objects so that's pretty much it that's all you have to do in this part of the Photoshop thing with your work paths that's how you create work paths now to export them we just click file click export or go to export and hit pass to illustrator now the reason why we would want to rename those work paths was because of this so we can choose all paths so basically we would be 
making a, a illustrator file out of all these paths basically exporting these paths to illustrator all of them instead of just individual ones like freshmen so if i want to use freshmen if i just want to create a path object or file out of this and that's it that's what i would create and hit ok and save it somewhere else but i want to do all paths so we click ok and we're just going to save it on desktop so i'm just going to replace this here and that's it we're done it won't really show anything that's it that's a fast process now we would open up illustrator and we're going to click open and we're going to open up our fml this is going to be checked and our work bounding box is going to be unchecked so let's just uh check uncheck unlegacy artboard uncheck crop areas or area and then just check our work bounding box so click ok so you can see it's a really really zoomed in project so we're just going to zoom out here so just command zero control zero or command minus to go back so you can see when i hover over you're going to see like these blue outlines and stuff like that those are our paths actually from our previous project so you can see on your layers you could rename it so i'm just going to rename it to fml logo and this is where our paths are. So you're wondering why is there not a lot of things here and it's just one object. Well, that's where the magic is all about. You're going to hit this little arrow here with drop down and you can see all your individual paths all in one layer. But we're going to want to choose all the paths by clicking this circle right here on your layer. And I'm just going to resize this a little bit. Just move it, center it real fast, and done. So once we click that little circle right there, we we're basically selecting all the paths that were created, or you might as well say anchor points that were created from your Photoshop file. So, but you can also click separately on the other circles, but we want all of them. Now you're wondering how do we get the black and how do we color in. So basically we'll go to our color tool here, our fill tool and stroke tool here on the left side. And we, you will see that it has no fill. So we're going to just click color and we're going to double click this and give it a fill. We're going to give it black, of course. And voila, that's it. But you're wondering where is my FML and why is it not white? Why is it why is it all black you're wondering why is the r not complete and there's no white in between well that's the thing about the paths they will some with some fonts or some objects it won't detect that it would detect it but it will basically color all those things and if you select everything else if you don't see that now to eliminate those things we're just going to do this we are going to look for these paths oops we're gonna look for all these paths on our layers so basically as you can see I already selected the circle so by hovering you just click it and you'll see that it's highlighted here in your layers path so we're just going to change the fill to that make sure that your fill is that color I'm gonna change the fill to white and I know you're wondering why is FML not here? Well, because this circle is actually in front of FML, which is above it. So we're just going to drag FML from our layers above the circle. And bam, that's it. That's your FML logo right there. Now to do the same thing with the R and the A, we're just going to click on the middle pass for the R. And we're going to hold shift and do the same thing for A. So it'll select both. And we're just going to change the color as well to white. And there you go. And that is it. And that is how you create paths on Photoshop. And you transfer them to Illustrator. And that's how you fix your logo or image on Illustrator to vectorize it. All you have to do is save as and save it as a EPS file and make sure you rename it to whatever you want. Let's save it. 
make sure all your settings is there click include document thumbnails and just click OK and it'll just write a EPS format file and now all you have to do is send it to whoever you want to send it to and that's it there you go that's the vector file and that's how you create paths and export paths from Photoshop to Illustrator so thanks for watching guys and make sure to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one peace